Hey guys, in this video I'll be going over data link for the Tomcat. The Tomcat's data link system is called Link 4 and there's two modes, Link 4A and Link 4C. Link 4A is the tactical data link mode where you can connect to an AWACS or an aircraft carrier and they will share target information with you. Link 4C is the fighter to fighter mode where you can connect to a data link network with other Tomcats and you can share targets with each other. First we'll go over Link 4A which is the tactical data link system. If you're using the mission editor you need to put down an AWACS or an aircraft carrier to connect to. For AWACS, you just click the plane button, and I'm going to choose an E3, and you just place it down, and you can put waypoints like this. This is what the E3 looks like, but if you want, you can also choose the E2. If you want to place an aircraft carrier down, you press the ship button, and you go to the ones that say CVN, I'm just going to choose the CVN 74, and then you can place it down, and you can also place waypoints. If you want to connect to the data link, first you have to go on the right, and turn on the power with this switch here. Make sure this switch is set to normal make sure this switch is set back to tactical. Then you have to dial in the frequency. If you hold right shift and click K, you can open the knee board. And if you go to this page that says tactical data link system, you can see all the data links you can connect to. I'm gonna connect to the Theodore Roosevelt. Now for the frequency, the number three is already preset by default in the Tomcat, so you just ignore it. So I'm gonna enter 184. Once you've connected to the data link, you should see the symbols show up here. If you don't see them, make sure you have the data link button activated. I can also connect to the E3 AWACS, so let me type in 107. And as you can see, now I'm getting information from the AWACS. The bottom part of the symbol is what the data link is giving you, and the top part is what your own radar sees. In this case, with the symbol on the left, you can see there's a bottom part, but there's no top part. Which means that my radar does not see it, but the AWACS sees it, and it's giving it to me. The symbol on the right, though, has a bottom and top part, which means my own radar and the AWACS can see it. Also remember, a square is unknown, a circle is friendly, and a diamond is hostile. So with this target on the right, there's a circle on the bottom, which means the AWACS has identified it as a friendly and is giving me that information. And the top symbol is a square, which means my own radar is seeing it, but for my own radar, it's unknown. Now let's go over Link 4A, which is the fighter-to-fighter -fighter data link system. Now, in the manual, it said that with Link 4A, only four aircraft can connect to each other at a time. And it also said that all the aircraft have to be part of the same flight in the mission editor. I'm not sure if this is completely true because I think I've seen people do it without being in the same flight, but just in case, I'll show you how to do that. When you place down your Tomcat, if you just place one down like this, and then if you click the plane button and add another one down, they're not going to be in the same flight. What you have to do is click on the first Tomcat, and then come over here and increase it to however many you need, and the max is four. And now all these Tomcats will be a part of the same flight. And as you can see, when I click the first one and drag it around, it drags around all the other ones. Now keep in mind, I'm not sure if you have to do this. I think I've seen people do it without having them in the same flight. But the manual says you have to do this, so just in case, that's how you do it. Now let's go over how to set up the link for C. On the power switch, instead of turning it on, put it down to auxiliary and that will turn on the link for C system. Make sure this is set to norm. Make sure this is set to tactical. And for the reply switch, make sure it's set to norm. If you have it set down, then it will be receiving only, and you cannot send information to the other planes in your flight. So make sure you have it set to norm. Then, for the frequency here, you can just choose any frequency. And for the other Tomcats that are going to be with you, make sure they all do the same frequency. So for example, let's say we want to do 202. Then, for the address, this is different for each plane. So for example, maybe I would be 01 and my friend would be 02. So remember, if you want to do Link 4C with other Tomcats, you all have to have the same frequency here, but you have to have different addresses. Also, with Link 4C, you can share up to four targets at a time with other Tomcats. Now, obviously, I can't demonstrate it because I don't have another Tomcat with me, but as long as you set it up right, and as long as you have the data link symbols activated here, then it should be working. That was how to do Link 4A and Link 4C. If you're flying alone, you can also use Gesture to adjust some data link settings for you. You can open the Gesture menu and go to Data Link, and you can change the mode and the frequency. The last thing I'll be going over is NavGrid. Now this is not technically part of the data link system, this is part of the navigation system. It's just that I thought it would make more sense to go over it in the data link video because it makes it really easy to split up targets into different sections and decide which Tomcat should attack which target. To turn on the NavGrid, you need to go to the computer panel and set it to data link and then click NavGrid. And then go to your TID here and set it to ground stabilize. And now you can see all these lines here. If you want to turn it off, you can just click this button again and it will go away. You can move the center of the display around. You need to have this button, HCU offset. You hold half action, move the cursor where you want it to be, and then press full action, and then press HCU offset. 
and it will move the center. If you want it to go back to normal, you can set it to aircraft stabilize and then back to ground stabilize. Here's what the nav grid looks like. It splits your airspace into different sections. And it also has these lines here that mark it by range. Here's 50 nautical miles, and then 100, and then 150. This is good to use with data link because let's say there's a target right here. I could tell my teammate, engage the target that's in the second section and around 60 miles away. You can adjust the nav grid, you can adjust the location of it, and you can choose how many sections there are, where it points, and how wide it is. First, let's adjust the location. I'm just gonna choose a random point on the map. I'm gonna hold left alt on my keyboard and left click. And you can see the coordinates here. I want to use these ones, lat long decimal minutes. What I'm going to do is I'm going to type the coordinates in, but first I'm going to click clear, just in case there was anything in the scratch pad, which is up here. Then I'm going to click latitude. And since this is a north coordinate, I'm going to click N. And then I'm going to type 4208. Seven, seven, five. And you can check the scratch pad just to make sure it's good. Then click enter then longitude and since this is an east coordinate i'm going to click e for longitude coordinates remember to start with a zero zero four two zero four eight six nine i'm going to check it right here then click enter at that point you don't need the menu anymore now i'm going to recenter my display right here then you can adjust the angle it points at to type the angle in you click the heading button if you type in 360, it'll point north. But I'm going to have it point west, so I'm going to type in 270. I'm going to do heading 270, enter. Now it's pointing off west. Then you can adjust the angle at which it covers. You can go from 30 to 180 degrees. I'm going to say 50 degrees, so I'm going to click altitude, 50, and when I click enter, you should see it get bigger. And you can also change how many sections there are. Right now there's four sections, but let's say I just wanted there to be three. I click number three and then enter. Now there's only three sections. If you want to look at the nav grid from the pilot seat, just set this switch to TID. Now I can't see it right now because gesture actually set it back to aircraft stabilize. But if you had this set to ground stabilize, then you'd be able to see the nav grid from the front seat. But what I can do is actually go to the gesture menu, go to navigation, Navigation grid, and I'm just going to click disable nav grid. Roger. And then I'm going to click enable nav grid. Roger that. So when I disabled and then re enabled it, that kind of reset it, and now I can see it on the display. You can also adjust the grid settings from here. Most of these settings are the same as the ones you saw in the back seat. The only extra setting you have from the gesture menu is this one here that says nav grid reference from map. What you can actually do is click the circle on top and set down a point and I'm just gonna name it something. And then I can go to the gesture menu and do nav grid reference from map. I'm gonna select my point. You bet. Then gesture is gonna start typing the coordinates in. And right now it's not showing it. If that happens, you can adjust any of the settings and it should show it. So I'm just gonna go to a random setting here. I'm gonna go to grid sectors. I'm just gonna do four. Roger. And now it's showing the nav grid again. That was the nav grid. The last function for the data link is the ACLS or the automatic carrier landing system. However, I'm not going to be going over that in this video because I already have a separate video for that. So if you want to know how to do an ACLS landing, then you can look at that video. That was data link for the F-14. Thanks for checking out this video and I'll see you later.